Hi, I'm Kira Becker, and I'm here with Matthew Flaherty, who's the primary investigator of the Stop It study. He's a co-author of a presentation that will happen tomorrow looking at the results of the Stop It study and the Stop Light study in intracerebral hemorrhage. Matthew, can you tell us a little bit about those studies? Sure. So the Stop It study is an American study funded by NANDS, and Spotlight is a Canadian study funded by CIHR. Both of these are treatment trials for intracerebral hemorrhage, and the goals of the trials was to determine if we could treat patients at higher risk or highest risk of hematoma expansion with recombinant activated factor 7 and reduce hematoma growth. So we were using the spot sign to um, identify the high-risk patients and randomizing them to treatment or placebo. We also had an observational arm with spot negative patients to use as a comparator group. So can you tell us what you found in the study? Sure. So to begin with, we found that the spot sign did predict hematoma growth when we compared spot positive placebo treated patients to spot negative patients. Um, and it predicted outcome as we expected based upon prior observational studies. However, the predictive power didn't seem as robust as in prior studies and the hematoma growth in the spot positive placebo patients was not as great as in prior studies. When we looked at the spot positive patients randomized recombinant activated factor 7 compared to those randomized to placebo, we did not see a difference in final hematoma volume. So the treatment strategy did not seem to reduce hematoma growth. Why do you think that the spot sign was not as predictive in this randomized controlled trial as in prior studies? Uh, that's a good question. It's a challenging question. Um, part of it may have been patient demographics. So um, we excluded certain patients who were in observational studies such as those on uh, anticoagulants and patients with very large hemorrhages who were moribund who may have had more vigorous uh, hemorrhage growth in our study. We also had a higher percentage of deep hemorrhages, which may grow less than low bar hemorrhages. Were there any safety concerns with giving the recombinant factor 7? There were not. Um, there, were, you know, there was a lot of morbidity in the trial because of the disease state, um, but we didn't see any signal in terms of safety problems with uh, use of recombinant activated factor 7 in our trial. So where do we go from here? Well, this is a tough disease state, um, and uh, we still think, in theory, hemostatic therapy should work, um, but how do we make it work, and uh, how do we identify the right patients? Time is of the essence for the active bleeders, so those who are really bleeding fast, time is important. And we had a, over an hour a gap between baseline CT and administration of study drug because of consent and, and uh, mobilization of drug and whatnot, and so it may be that we need to focus on treating even faster and perhaps using a composite type of score, looking not just at the spot sign, but other um, uh, signs that may predict ongoing bleeding, especially very early um, after the hemorrhage. Great. Well, I applaud you on this very novel trial design using the spot sign to select patients for therapy. I think that's a great step forward, and I look forward to the next trials. Thank you.